Do, 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 do. Well, hello, class, and welcome to class two on the channel Classed. So many classes, and we're not even using class based component. How did that come to be? All right, so enough of the nonsense. So now that we've hooked up our application with uh, Apollo, and by hooked up our application with Apollo, I mean we set up our Apollo provider and we connected our Apollo client to our Apollo server, Apollo, Apollo. So before we use any um, GraphQL queries and mutations and fetch any data and show it, uh, we need to set up as um, our application because we need to set up some basic markup because this doesn't look good. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, what I want to focus on this video is to introduce the router and create uh, different pages. Uh, mainly, we're going to create a home and login page. Uh, page, yeah, login and register page. All right, uh, I'm going to stop talking and start writing code. <laughs> okay, so make sure you got your server running at port 5000 and uh, the client running. And let's open up a new tab. And here let's install uh, React Router DOM. So let's say npm install React uh, Router and DOM. And since we're installing stuff, I just want to quick say quickly we're going to be using, like I said, semantic UI. Uh, it's really cool. You can actually install it through the um, command line and kind of customize a couple of things, but I'm just going to install it, uh, just install the CSS and install this React integration called semantic UI React. Very creative. Ha ha ha. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're just, okay, let's go to get started. We're just going to run this uh, yarn add or npm install semantic UI React, and we need to install the CSS as well so we're gonna say uh, install um, semantic UI CSS so we're gonna add those two so here we'll say semantic uh, UI CSS and semantic UI react let those install and uh, here in the app uh, JS file uh, let's bring the router and route so here we'll say import uh, browser router I'm gonna give it an alias router because it makes more sense. I'm pretty sure one day they'll change it to just router. <laughs> All right, so here we'll say React from React Router DOM. And uh, here, above our CSS, we want to bring semantic UI. Um, just in case you don't know, the reason why, because we, if we want to change anything, uh, we will change it through our custom CSS. And the fact that we have it after, it's going to override the default styles from semantic UI, aka uh, cascading. So semantic UI CSS slash semantic uh, dot min dot CSS like this. Uh, so now the CSS, we, we have it in our app and we can use the semantic uh, UI React and just use those React components. Um, so here, actually here, instead of this div, we're going to put the router. So we'll say uh, router and uh, inside of here we'll have, um, so we'll have our routes. So first route will be the home route. So we'll say exact path and the path will be to slash component component will be home. Uh, by the way, I just want to say quickly, I'm not going to be explaining the kind of the basics of React because this is uh, more of a Apollo um, course. If you want to know the basics of React, you can do my uh, uh, zero to 60 tutorial or you can do anyone else's as long as you learn uh, the basics. All right. So here another route is the login route, so it will say exact path equals, or not equals actually, oh yeah, equals. I'm confusing myself, guys. All right, so register or login and component will be login. Of course, we'll create these components in a second. Let's just copy this, uh, click here and do uh, register. This will be capital R. So here and we'll create a, um, oh, we've already created the folder components, but I'll create another folder, call it pages. And inside of here, we'll have uh, login.js, we'll have uh, home.js, and we'll have a register.js. Here we'll say R RFC, why is it not working, or RCF? Yeah, RCF. All right, so here we'll say at the bottom, export default, uh, register and uh, this by the way even though they're functions uh, but you have to have them um, Pascal case meaning the first letter has to be capital For some reason it doesn't work if it's not um, all right so here we'll just say we'll just have a header one for now uh, saying register 
page. Uh, save, let's copy all of this, go to the home and just control D here and say home. So home page and these are renamed to home. Let's go to the login as well, paste this and just um, say login here. Just to have a couple of different pages for now, we'll populate them later. All right, let's close them. Uh, let's import them. So here we'll say import, we'll have home from uh, same directory uh, pages, uh, pages slash home. And we can just copy this two more times. So here we'll say login, and here we'll say register. All right, uh, one thing that I wanna do is I wanna have a navbar at the top, and uh, we can go here in um, react semanticui.com and go to uh, right here, menu. Now they call it menu, and I wanna get this one. Oh no, not this one, this one. This one that looks like tabs, looks cool. Uh, let's actually just copy this entire uh, component. Just copy that. And uh, let's go to our app. And I'm gonna create a component here, call it menu bar. They call it menu, so I'm gonna call it menu, why not? I'm gonna close this terminal. So here, um, this is a class-based component. Of course, we need to change that because we only want functional components. So here we'll say function, uh, what is it, menu bar. And we're gonna export it, export default menu bar and here instead of component we're gonna get use state and uh, right here instead of state like this we will say um, const active item and set active item equals use state and this will start with an empty string and the way these works uh, work is that each menu item you have here has a name and if the active property is true that means it's going to be uh, highlighted that means we're active on this page right now and this name will be uh, rendered as the name of the tab with the first letter capitalized so if this returns true that means if the active item right here has the value of messages the tab messages will be highlighted or the nav link will be highlighted so each time we click one, we want to change the uh, active item name uh, to that to the name of that um, menu item, if that makes sense. I think it does. All right, so we need to say this is a, either a const or a uh, function. I'm just going to keep it as an arrow function like that. But the difference here, instead of setting state, uh, we're going to say set um, active item and just pass it this name so that it changes it. And we don't need a render because this is a functional component. We just return and we need to remove this parent uh, curly brace here. I'm going to remove the segment and I'm going to have any image. Remove this wrap in div. Just keep the menu. And here we don't need to import segment. We just need menu. So we've set up our navbar, but of course we don't want f f messages and friends and logout. We want, um, so the first one, we want it to be the home. So we'll, we'll give it a name home and the active uh, will be will be active when it's home and here we don't pass the on click event will be this handle click but we don't give it this dot because this is not a, um, a class based component anymore we just pass it like that and here we'll have um, we have a, a login um, tab or nav link and this will be login as well and uh, actually I want the login and the logout button or the register button to be on the right so I'm gonna put put it inside of this uh, other menu that's positioned on the right. Uh, so that's the login, that's fine. And instead of logout, we'll have register here, register. Make sure to change this one as well. Okay, let's save, let's see what this looks like. Uh, but we're not gonna see it because we, ha we haven't used it here. So let's say here, import menu bar from components slash menu bar. And uh, we're gonna put it at the top here. So menu bar, so it's gonna be on the page regardless of which, what page we're in. All right, let's save everything. Let's make sure our app is running without any errors. It's compiling. All right, it runs successfully. Let's look at our app. Let's refresh. Okay, there's a problem. Unclick this handle effect. Oh, did I not save? I did. Oh yeah, I thought I removed this, this, this. Okay, now it should work. All right, so we get the menu but it's uh, huge. So let's put everything in a container 
so we go back to the semantic UI, the container, where is it? Uh, right here, all right. What's cool about this uh, documentation is that you can see as well what it renders eventually. So uh, let's use it and I wanna show you something as well. So we'll just copy that. And let's go in the app, I'll close this terminal window. And here we'll say import container from semantic UI react. And let's wrap everything, let's cut everything and wrap it in a container component. So tab and put everything inside. And let's look at our app. We have two home buttons, let's fix that. So here, um, let's remove this, save. All right, so we get our buttons. Uh, none of them is active, but if you click one, it becomes active. But we're not browsing to different pages. Uh, but I want to show you something quickly. So we got the container, right? But don't forget, at the end of the day, we've linked the CSS. So we can actually just here, just replace this container with div and give it a class name of UI container. Because if you look at the documentation, at the end of the day, it's just going to render a UI uh, container, a div with a class UI container, which tells um, our CSS that, you know, which tells our page that this is from the semantic UI CSS. And in fact, we have the same effect here. But just don't forget, with semantic UI, you have to always have this UI thing. If you just say div.container, it's not going to work. All right, we're, we're just going to revert back to using the um, container component. Just wanted to show you that. And um, here, uh, we want these to be links. So these menu items, uh, what's cool about these components from uh, Semantic UI React, it's an, an integration. So we can still say as, and we can have it as a different um, component. Uh, we can have it behave as a different component as well. And we want it to behave as a link. So we want to import that. So let's say import link from React Browser DOM. And here we want it to behave as link. So here we can uh, pass the props that will be on the link, which we, we just need two. So this is the home, we want it to go to just slash. Let's copy these two and paste them here. This will go to slash uh, login. Because um, those pages are there. If we, so if you go to login, slash login, we will see that the login page is there. It's just that they're not linked. Now let's go back. So this will go to slash login and this will go to slash register like this. Let's save all files and let's look at our app. All right, so we get the navigation, but the home initially is not active. All right, so the way we can solve this is that uh, what I wanted to do is I want it to be by default on the home and then when we click it changes. So we can start by uh, saying home here, use state home and it starts there. And if we go there uh, to any other page, it goes to that one. And as well, it highlights that one. Uh, let's make these buttons bigger. And let's go here. So in our menu, we can, I think we can, ha yeah, we have a property size. And by the way, you can do control space and you can um, so scroll up. You can see all the properties that you can add. Of course, you can see them on the documentation. Uh, here we have a property size and we have these sizes. I think the biggest is massive. And I want to give a, um, a color as well to the active item of teal. Let's save. Let's look. All right. So they're, for some reason, like the biggest size is actually not that big. But that's fine. That's fine by me. The, those are big enough. All right. So it's got this cool teal color. Um, one thing that we need to fix, though, if you just go to the page slash login like this, it's not going to highlight login. It's just going to... It's, not, it's just going to set home as active. So what we want to do is we want to each time the menu bar loads, it, it, it looks at the link that we're at and this, the temp, the, bleh, depending on this link, we actually set the link active. So if this link says slash login, we set this active. If this link says slash register, we set this to active. So let's go to our menu bar. And uh, here we can say const path name, and we can get this just from the JavaScript uh, from the window object. Uh, this is just JavaScript window dot location and dot path name. And depending on where we we're at, this can uh, this can be just slash, this can be slash uh, about whatever page you're in. So. Uh, the way we're going to determine that we're in the home page, it's not going to be slash home. It's just going to be slash. So we're going to check for that. So here we'll have another variable called uh, just path. And we'll say if path name, so we'll do a ternary operator. 
equals um, just slash, then we want to set the path to the word home. Else, so colon, um, what do we do? Yeah, okay, so what we do here is that we have slash about, for example, or slash login, because that's more the case in our app. We don't want it to set it to a slash login because that will, that will confuse these items and they will not be active. We just want this. So we can use the JavaScript uh, function substring. So we'll say path name dot sub uh, dot substring, or actually just sub str. And um, uh, we can uh, start at a um, an index. We want to start at the index one, which is this one. And we want to get the rest of the string. So we'll just leave it like that. So if it's a login, it's just going to take this without taking the slash. And it's going to set it to that page. Now we want to as well set the active item to that path. So we want to pass it to our use state. And of course, this will come after um, this logic right here. All right, let me remove this comment and save. And this should work. All right, it works. So if we go to slash login, it uh, it sets that to active. And if we go to slash uh, register, it sets that to active. And if we change them, they do change and the page actually changes. All right, so that's that with setting the routes and uh, implementing semantic UI. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start to populate uh, the home page with uh, posts from our server. So look forward to that. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe and all that good jazz. And by the way, I just wanted to say there are a couple of really beautiful, generous souls that have chosen to support me on Patreon. I just want to say I really appreciate you. Thanks a lot. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.